From June to October every year, it's monsoon season when continuous heavy rainfall means that 70% of Bangladesh is underwater. It's a country where, despite the dangers, people's lives are naturally oriented around the rivers. In summer, the melting snows of the Himalayas combine with the torrential monsoon rains to cause devastating floods. Once the monsoon is over, the water levels subside and normal activity resumes. Thousands of boats return to ply the river waters. For everything in Bangladesh is done by boat, whether it's transporting goods and livestock, making day-to-day -day journeys, or of course, fishing. Nagabari, where the Ganges and the Brahmaputra rivers meet. A few days ago, this place was still underwater. But the floods have gone and the people are back. For centuries, Hindus of the Sutradhar caste have been coming here with their rudimentary tools to build and repair boats known as malas. These enormous wooden vessels transport cereal crops which feed the country's 150 million inhabitants. At this time of year, the boatyard bustles with activity. After the rainy season, from October or November, the floods subside and we draw the boats up onto the riverbanks. It's the best season. The rain has stopped, the floods have gone, the current is less strong, and the riverbanks are solid. We can work without any risk of damaging the boats. Once the boats are out of the water, the hulls are given a close inspection. In a few days' time, the Malars will be back on the river, their holes full to the brim with grain. So now is the time to make sure they're in good shape. Gradually, the boats are put back together thanks to the skillful hands of the carpenters. We are of the Sutradhar caste. My father, grandfather, great-grandfather and myself have been working here for 150 years. We are true carpenters. We are born carpenters. My brothers and I, my whole family, it's our profession. Materials are scarce here, and so everything is precious. The smallest piece of wood or metal is used again and again in the shipyard. With their meager resources, the men have evolved ingenious construction methods. Once repaired, the vessel must be very sturdy so that when she's fully loaded, she can withstand considerable stress and strain. Whilst the Sutradhar carpenters are busy repairing the boats, 200 kilometers further south, the Majis are on the water. The Majis are expert fishermen. They take their boats down to the estuary, where the fresh waters of the river flow into the salt water of the Bay of Bengal. This is where they spread their nets. Even here, the water is fairly shallow and there are sandbanks everywhere. Bamboo sticks placed in the sand enable the fishermen to fix their nets, which will be drawn tight by the action of the current, trapping the fish inside. The waters here are plentiful. Fish is the main source of protein for the people of Bangladesh. It's time to go home. The red flag signals to the boats coming in that the tide is high. By carefully navigating between the sandbanks, they will be able to reach the pier without running aground. The fish are immediately placed into baskets to be carried ashore. Like many similar islands, Dubla Shah appears only when the water levels are low. 
Then, for five months, hundreds of fishermen set up a makeshift camp on this tongue of sand. Day and night, their only concern is to catch as many fish as they can. When the current is strong, the fishing is good, and the men bring back huge quantities of fish. Many hands are needed to sort them out. You find at least a dozen different sorts of fish here. Those are Neya, and these are Modubesha. Look, these are Suri. Those are Dakshada. And you also get Pesha. There are no fridges or freezers on this island, so the fish must be preserved by drying. Once they've been gutted and cleaned, they are cut open and laid on woven mats on the sand. The sun and the wind quickly do their work. The fish are then taken by boat to be sold in markets all around the country. Upriver, the carpenters are finishing the repair work on the mallards. To ensure the hulls are watertight, the wood is corked with tar. The goods transported aboard the mallards must be protected from the region's torrential rains, so the carpenters cover each boat with interwoven slats of reed which provide a sturdy roof. When the mallard is fully loaded, the boat's rudder will be subjected to considerable strain. The men take particular care when putting this key element of the boat back in place. Time for the Malas to go back on the water. It's a delicate operation which needs everyone to lend a hand. All of the crops grown in the delta are starting to pile up. These include hemp, which is woven to make hessian. Bangladesh is the world's foremost exporter of hessian cloth. The Bengal delta has always been the breadbasket of the Indian peninsula. The alluvial soil is extremely fertile and as many as three crops of rice can be harvested in a single year. The accounting system for loading the boat is one stick for each sack. The sacks piling up on board will weigh 50 tons, 1,500 sacks per boat. Traders and boatmen agree on a price for the shipment. Tomorrow at dawn, the boats will head off downriver to Dhaka, the Bangladeshi capital. As the loading continues, a group of river gypsies land on the island to offer their services. They are one of the many communities living on the river. In times gone by, they controlled the trade in pink pearls harvested from freshwater oysters. Now they have a more unusual way of making a living. The men are often snake charmers. Where does it hurt? My teeth. As for the women, they can heal certain conditions by blowing on a horn. I'll take away the decay and I'll give you an ointment. You must pay me 500 takas. It's not very much, okay? Ah. That's it. The pain is gone. Say that it's healed. It's time for the boatmen to be on their way. In the early morning mist, the Malars make the journey downstream to Dhaka in convoy. 
In the dry season, the numerous sandbanks make navigation tricky. But the rice must be delivered quickly. Stocks in the cities are low. Millions of people live in Dhaka, and they need huge quantities of rice. The country's entire crop of rice is not sufficient. That's why I'm in this business. The poor eat nothing but rice. The rich have more varied requirements. 